Hi everyone, I'm very excited that we are reaching that state where we actually start working on real exploitation stuff. So let's get started. So let's summarize where we are right now. For now, we haven't got a shell yet, but we actually made lots of progress. So what do we have? We know we can win the race condition with the help of the debugger, i.e. by patching the mutex. So it actually makes the re recovery thread stuck and then we can force winning the race. We know we can free a KN instrument after finalizing it and having the KN instrument into a specific state, which is the committed state. One question we need to solve is how can we detect from Userland that we won the race condition in the kernel? Because let's say we are able to replace the freed KN instrument with control data in the kernel. It will be useful to know we won the race condition because once we win the race condition, we may want to be able to do additional things like actually building an arbitrary read-write primitive so we can get better exploitation primitives than just the use after free. Also, we need to avoid the kernel to crash. And so we have a few challenges to solve. We have also just confirmed we can have a good Feng Shui layout. And this is important because we want to be able to replace the free kernismant chunk with some data we control. All we need to do is to have the kernismant that we're going to use after free between two other allocations that will never going to be freed. And this is so we can replace the enlistment with controlled data. And so we have just confirmed that we can use namepipe right for the whole creation since it allows to get the enlistment objects between namepipe chunks. And from just looking at the contents inside these namepipe chunks, it looks like we control most of it. And so we should be able to use the same method for the replacement chunk to control most of the data and in particular the fling pointer. Because we will be building the exploit gradually now, we are going to split the exploit code into multiple files. So far, we've been working with a small source file for each lab. And so from now on, we're going to be introducing lots of helpers functions that we will use in this lab, but also in all the future labs, because we are going to glue things together to build our exploit by the end of this course, which is kind of why you are attending this course, right? So we will have the ktm.c helper file for creating the different KTM objects, like transactions, resource manager, enlistments, and so on. And we will use the convention we previously explained where we use a X prefix before the name of the function. And that will basically be a wrapper of a public KTM function. So for instance, we use X create transaction and it will be the wrapper for create transaction. And so these wrappers will handle error cases so we can easily see problems if a function call fails. Then we have the Feng Shui.c helper file for having a good heap Feng Shui layout. It will contain functions to create the name pipes and send data into them in order to get the allocations we want on the non-page pool. We also have the winhelper.c file for dealing with like some generic helpers. So for instance, we'll have functions for dealing with calling syscalls from C using an assembly stub and other functions for dealing with thread priorities and this kind of stuff. Since we're going to need this kind of function for increasing the chance of winning the race condition. And we have a generic trigger.c helper file with functions to create all the required KTM objects to reach the state of being able to trigger the vulnerability. So for instance, there is a function named init threads and KTM objects, which role is basically to create the transaction manager, resource manager, transaction and enlistments and have them in the correct state so we can trigger the vulnerability. And all of that will actually use the helpers functions from ktm.c since that is what they are for. And so basically it is just about gluing everything. So each lab will have its own main C file with the main function and it will be calling all the helpers from the other C files to achieve its goal. So the lab you should be ready to be working on is called trigger use after free. And we kind of triggered a use after free already in a previous lab when we enabled verifier and used the assistance of the debugger to force winning the race. But we were only able to see the reuse of a free chunk or the reuse of a chunk that was tracked by, by verifier as being freed. But since then, 
we made good progress on the Feng Shui and we were able to create holes using name pipes. And we also think we should be able to use the same name pipe chunks to replace the freed kernelisment before it gets reused during the use after free. So the goal of this lab is to reach that state but we are still going to use the assistance of the debugger to win the race condition, at least for now, mainly because we want to solve other problems. We don't know how to detect we won the race condition in the kernel from Userland yet, and we want to confirm we can combine the name pipe heap feng shui with triggering the vulnerability and finally replacing that chunk with control data, which is a, a good achievement and goal to have at the moment. Also, one important goal of this lab is just to get familiar with all the helper files since we will use them in all the following labs. One last thing is that we will take into account the delayed free list in that lab since we need to make sure the kernelismants we will simulate winning the race condition is actually freed and not just in the delayed free list. And so one easy way to do so is to actually trigger the race condition on the 30 second kernelismant as then we can just free that 30 second kernelismant first and then we can free the other 31st kernelismant which will make sure the initial kernelismant we freed is actually freed since triggering 32 total frees should enforce that the delayed free list is flushed. So if we manage to reach our goal, we know we are going to crash the VM because it should reuse the kernelismant, but with random data in that chunk, like A's, for instance. And so make sure you have a snapshot of your VM. One trick you can use in order to skip a breakpoint many times is you can just execute the go command separated with a semicolon and have them all executed at once. Also, I advise you actually copy the winback commands in a text editor so you can easily copy paste them when re-executing the debugging session over and over. So before I jump into the actual code of this particular lab, I just want to quickly show the different files that are shared by the different labs. So we can see we have some header files and you'll notice that they are in the actual common include path. Same thing for the actual Feng Shui, which are in the common path. So they will be shared between all the different labs. So you shouldn't need to actually go over all the functions from the, the shared C helper files, but I'm just going to give you a quick overview so you get the general idea. So win helper is all about like co calling syscalls um, and all the helpers function we previously used to exit, print a quid, or deal with uh, pinning a thread to a CPU or this kind of thing. Trigger.c is all about triggering the vulnerability. So there is a offset for particular structures that we'll see later. And then we have functions to actually initialize an exploit var structure, which we'll describe later. And also code to actually initialize a thread to trigger the vulnerability. And initialize like transaction or, or objects to trigger the bug. Then we have the ktm.c, which is basically all the KTM APIs that are documented by Microsoft on the MSDN, but with their own wrapper in order to handle error errors. So for instance, here we have specific NT query information resource manager, which actually calls the syscall. Then we have X create transaction to actually call create transaction. And most of the time, we try to only expose the arguments that we need and just have default values for the other one. And we support an, a Boolean exit and failure, which means if the API fails, we can detect it right away. Then we have Feng Shui.c, which is basically used for doing the Feng Shui based on name pipes. So for instance, we have a function to create random strings. So we can use that to create ra random name pipe uh, names. And then we have all the functions, which we actually saw already in previous lab where we can actually uh, 
create alternate name pipe. So we create the, the server uh, and then use the client to connect on the server, then create the buffer and so on, and then filling the holes and creating the interweaving chunks before we actually create holes. And because we are actually building an exploit, it's going to be multi-threaded, so we can do several things at a time. We also have code to actually initialize stuff in general in different threads. So for instance, here we can initialize the actual name pipe server into a different thread. Okay, so now let's focus on the actual lab itself. It's in trigger use after free.c. So you can see it's not in the common path because this is the actual code for that particular lab. And we can see it has one function, which is race recovering resource manager trigger use after free, which is the, the main function that tries to loop over the canismant, at least make sure we can trigger it from userland. So it actually loops in the kernel that we'll detail in a second. And then there is the main function, which is kind of responsible for starting things and starting the different threads and making sure everything is synchronized. So we'll only go over the main function to start with, and then we'll see what are the different functions we need to understand. So we have the exploit vars t structure. So by hitting control and then click, we can see it's going to browse. And so let's go over that structure because it's quite important. It's a structure to hold all the different exploitation variables. So for instance, it's going to have a Boolean to say, if we detect it, we won the race. Then it's going to have OS specific variables related to structures. Then we have handles for the resource manager, the transaction manager. Then we have handles for different threads. So we'll have one thread to actually trigger the recovery in kernel. Later, we'll have a thread to actually congest stuff. So we'll see later. Then we have handles for specific resource manager and, and transaction that we'll use to refill holes because we'll see that when we actually fail to win the race later, we'll want to actually refill the holes just to avoid noise on the heap. So we can just do it using enlistments and we use this specific transaction. Mm, then we have important thing is the spray pipe handle. So this will be used for spraying name pipes when we try to replace the canismants after we've triggered the free of the canismants. So we can actually have a safe use after free where we control the data. Then we have a list called use after free enlistment list, which is basically tracking all of the enlistments that are candidate for triggering the use after free so we can win the race. So if we look at that structure, we can see it holds a transaction. So all of the enlistments that are potentially usable for win the, winning the race condition will be part of the same transaction. And the enlistment will be tracked. So there will be N entries enlistments, and then the enlistment will be tracked into a different structure, which is called use after free enlistment. And you can see above that we'll just keep track of the handle of the enlistment and the grid of the particular enlistment. Then we have pointer to fake data we'll use when we actually allocate data on, on, in the kernel. The first um, one we're going to use is the spray enlistments. So as you can see, they are all called enlistment, leak enlistment, trap enlistment, spray enlistment. And so basically we'll spray fake enlistments in the kernel and we, we gave them a name so it's easy to talk about it. The spray enlistment, as you can imagine, is one fake enlistment we will spray in the kernel in order to replace the enlistment that has just been freed so we can actually reuse it in, a, in an efficient way. So that's why we name it spray enlistments. Later we'll see other enlistments. And then we have arguments for the different threads. So for example, argument for the name pipe thread, for the recovery thread, and then other stuff we'll see later. So the goal of this lab is to get the use after free working by using the assistance of the debugger. And so we're going to count the enlistment notifications we get from userland so we can actually deduce what was the latest enlistment that was touching kernel, then we'll free the this particular enlistment and 30 
one other enhancement in order to make sure the enhancement we want to win the race against is actually freed. And then we should be able to replace that free chunk with name pipes. So we see we initialize the exploit viable structure. All it does it just sets we haven't won the race yet. This is the command we'll execute later. And we actually initialize the operating system variables to the one for that particular Windows 10 version. So there is this concept of global debug viable that is used that you can enable, but by default we disable it because it's going to be very, very verbose. But basically you can see in the ktm.h header file that you have two functions, dprintf, like debug printf and noisy debug printf, which will print stuff if gdebug is actually more than one or two. So feel free to enable that if you want to debug problems. Then we check that the number of cores is actually more than two because we, we need more threads to actually work with the exploits. And then we initialize into the exploits var structure the size of the enlistment, which is 200 hex in order to actually allocate into a, a similar size of the k enlistment when we put the data into a name pipe. Then we allocate the spray enlistment buffer that's going to hold the data for the fake enlistment we're going to spray into the name pipe. So obviously it is of the, of the size we've just defined. And the data at the moment doesn't really matter. We just put A's into it, just so we can see stuff in the debugger. So then we call two functions that are worth talking about. The first one is init thread and KTM object. So this function is part of the trigger.c file and it initializes everything we need in order to actually trigger the vulnerability, like all the KTM objects and threads that are required. So the transaction one is a little bit special in that we won't use it to actually trigger the bug. It's a preliminary step we need to do, at least from our understanding. We need to have a special transaction and commit that transaction. So actually the resource manager can be recovered. So at least we managed to be able to recover a resource manager by having an initial transaction committed. So then we have two threads. So one is the call recovery thread, which will be the one to trigger the call to recover resource manager in the kernel and being stuck in the loop. And then we have another thread, which is the pipe server thread, which is, is the one that will um, wait for us to say, okay, please start replacing the freed k enlistment with that I will control into a name pipe. Then we have the thread arguments. And so we pin the main thread, so the main function to core zero, and we set specific priority and classes. Then we initialize the recovery thread for trigger. So this function will actually start a new thread, which we call the recovery thread, and it will be done on, on a different core, and it will have a low priority. So this one is the one we will try to raise, so it doesn't need to be fast. And if we go over this function, we see it initializes the argument of this recovery thread to like default value, and then it will call the create thread function on this recovery thread handler. So the recovery thread, all it does, it, it first starts by pinning the thread to the other CPU core we passed as an argument, and then it's gonna wait on a particular event. And all it does really is it calls recover resource manager. So we actually trigger the vulnerability. But before doing that, it's gonna wait for the event. And once it's done recovering, like it actually exited from kernel and it returned from user -land, it's gonna actually reset an event so we can detect it. So here we initialize the recovery thread so it's ready to do its job whenever we need. Here we're going to actually initialize the name pipe thread, the server side, um, by calling init name pipe thread. So this function we saw it previously, but basically it's going to set some default values and like default variables, and it's going to then start a thread on the name pipe server thread function. And this function is basically 
creating the name pipe, connecting on the name pipe, and then waiting on, on an event to actually uh, read the data from the name pipe. So once the server is created, this event will be set, and so the client can connect on the name pipe by just using create file. And we save the handle to the name pipe, which we'll use to replace the free chunk. So then we create different name pipe using the name pipe function function. So this function is taking as an argument the size we want to spray for each chunk, but it also take into account the extra size that we want to initially spray to fill all the holes. So again, we saw that function before. Here we're just a little bit more generic because we use random name pipe names to avoid problems. But then we can see we initialize the two name pipes, we fill the buffer with uh, incrementing data, and then we fill the holes extra times and we increment the drain count each time we spray chunks so we know how much we can drain. And then we allocate chunks alternatively on both name pipes. So we actually have interweaving chunks. And finally, we create holes by reading name pipes from the second name pipe. Because by setting this event, we're going to trigger the, the fact that the server will read the chunks and free them. So now the holes have been created, the recover thread is ready to, to trigger the vulnerability, but we haven't created the actual KTM objects. So what we do is now we create the environment. So we create a volatile transaction manager. So really it just calls create transaction manager with the volatile flag. Then we create or open the volatile resource manager. So this function is handy because it's going to either create the resource manager by calling the create resource manager function, but if it fails, it's going to actually, if it fails because it already existed, it's going to call open resource manager. So it gives us a, an easy way to, um, to create it or, or just open it. So then we call recover resource manager. This is just a standard way of initializing stuff. We don't trigger the bug yet. Then we save variables into the thread um, argument for the recovery thread. So then we use the transaction one for a pre preliminary step. And we use that because it seems enough to be able to then trigger a recovery resource ma manager call and trigger the bug. But basically all it does, it just creates one transaction, then create one enlistment and then commit complete that enlistment. And then that's enough. Then we close the transaction, we don't need it anymore. And finally, we set up a second transaction where the idea is we're going to set up all of the enlistments that we're going to use potentially when we trigger the use after free. So we call the single TX use after free enlistment. We pass the object we have just created for the resource manager, the transaction manager, and the number of enlistments we want to create for that transaction. So we can see this function use the use after free enlistment list. We saw earlier that actually tracks the transaction as well as the enlistment list uh, and the number of enlistments. So we allocate the structure. We set the number of enlistment to the one we want and need. We create the transaction and then we're going to basically fill the list with all of the enlistments that we create. And we actually retrieve the grid of the enlistment has, after it has been created. We don't necessarily need that grid because uh, one approach would have been to actually use the grid to figure out which was the latest enlistment that has been touched. But because now we can just count the notifications, we don't actually need it anymore, but we kept it for in case we need it later. And then we pre-prepare complete and prepare complete all of the enlistments. Uh, we're ready to call commit complete to commit it and we are ready to go. All we need then is to call commit complete on the enlistments we want to commit and free in order to trigger the bug. But at least we have everything we need now.
And then we're back in the function to initialize the KTM object and the thread. And so once we have initialized the different enlistments, we drain all of the notification. So there are no notification on the way later. And we just save the different informations into the, the exploit var structure. So now that we have initialized all the threads and KTM objects. Okay, so we are back in the main function. We now have initialized all the threads and the KTM objects. Now we call the race recovering resource manager trigger use after free function, passing the export var structure. And that's all we're going to do in the main function. So let's look at this last function. This function will actually try to complete a race against the TM recover resource manager function by making sure the kernel loops over our k enlistments. And remember, we're going to use the assistance of the debugger to win the race. So the instructions of the lab is to break on the TM recover resource manager X function. So we, we can figure out that actually it's going to start looping in that vulnerable function and then break on the TMP set notification resource manager on the 30 second iteration of the loop. Um, you can use this address, which is basically the address where it's going to actually call this function or at least around it. And then you can make sure you reach these 30 second iteration of the loop. And then you can use the bang patch command to modify the code and make sure the recover thread is stuck. So once it's done, we're going to hit a key and you can see there is this set event call that will actually trigger that the recover thread will actually start calling recover resource manager and it should actually hit our breakpoints. So after our breakpoints are hit, it goes into that loop. But before we actually want to do more stuff, we want to make sure we patch stuff in the debugger so the recover thread is actually stuck. And so you can see once we know we've patched the code, we can hit a key. And so the code you're going to have to add is here and there. But basically, what we're going to have to do is we're going to use one of the count notification function in order to count the notification that we have received. So we know how many canisments have been touched and we can deduce which one has been touched. And we're going to want to actually read at least 32 of them, as we described earlier. So we're going to increase the number of canisments we've touched. We're going to print that. And then, so just some debug code in case we the enlistment we have touched so far is more than the, enlist, the number of enlistment we have spread. It means there, is, there isn't enough enlistment anymore. So we just exit the loop. And here the goal is going to be to free the target enlistment. So the, the latest one we have touched first and then free the other 31 or more K enlistments just to make sure the first one we freed, which is the latest one that has been touched by the kernel is actually freed and we actually work around the delayed free list. So here the goal is going to call commit complete and close handle for all of these enlistments. Once that's, that is done, you can see a spray name pipe chunks function. So this spray name pipe chunk functions is defined into Feng Shui because the purpose of this function is to replace the freed K enlistments with data we control using the name pipes. So it's going to send lots of chunks of data. And so if you look at how it's called, we give it the handle of the name pipe that we can write to in order to allocate chunks in kernel. There is the number of chunks we want to spray. And then there is the fake enlistments that we initialize with A's, which is basically the data we're going to write from New Zealand that's going to be allocated in kernel. And this is the size we're going to write for each chunk. So yeah, all it does just calls write files for the data we control, we want to control, and it's going to do its spray count times. And so once it's returned, we've sprayed many name pipe chunks. So hopefully we have replaced the freed enlistments. And so at that time, the recovery thread is still stuck forever in the kernel. So it's going to print 
this information and it's going to basically tell us to break into the debugger and just unblock the recovery thread. And so after it's unblocked and you continue in the debugger, you should be able to see that it's going to access what it thinks is a can instance, but with your data you controlled that you've just spread in the name pipe. So now you should have a good understanding of the code. The main function is actually just creating the fake enlistment in the spray enlistment variable. It's initializing the different threads, like the name pipe thread for doing the feng shui and the KTM object for creating the environment to trigger the vulnerability. And then it's calling the race recovering resource manager trigger use after free function, which is the one that you'll have to modify. And basically it's going to tell the recover thread to trigger the loop. And then you're going to need to add code to actually count the notifications to figure out how many enlistments you have touched in the kernel. And then you're going to have to free the latest one that has been touched and then make sure to trigger the flushing of the delayed free list. And once that's done, it will replace the freed enlistment with data you control. And then when you unblock the recovery thread, you should be able to see it in the debugger. Okay, now it's your turn.